like to do to start this is to uh, give about a 15 minute presentation because um, as uh, Elizabeth alluded to, I like to provide some of the evidence and on, on which I would base the actual press release and the statement. So what we're going to talk about today is the, the Northern Gateway Project and in particular starting off with the five conditions set forward by the Liberal government before they would actually agree to such a project. <coughs> The five conditions are shown here, and today I'm going to focus only on condition number two. Condition number two of the province of British Columbia is that world-leading marine oil spill response prevention and recovery systems for BC's coastline and ocean to manage and mitigate the risks and costs of heavy oil and pipelines and shipments be in place. That is condition number two, and this is the focus of the entire pressure. I was <clears throat> somewhat concerned in the mandate letter uh, provided to the Minister of Pollock where there was a statement uh, with respect to eliminating red tape so that we could get to yes on economic development without needless debate, de de uh, delay. At the same time, within the mandate letter was a statement okay. uh, was a statement that says, complete the marine and land-based heavy oil spill response studies for our government's five conditions for proposed heavy oil pipeline projects in BC. So I specifically asked the minister uh, the following. Does that raise some concerns that it, in some sense precluding an outcome of an environmental assessment if your mandate is to get to yes as opposed to determining whether yes is the appropriate answer? The response um, is, is shown there and it will be in your handout. In summary, it says, uh, quickly summary, it says, it doesn't because of the fray without needless to delay. So the province was very clear that it was not, uh, that it was not the man within the mandate letter, did not preclude the outcome of a no. So then, Kumar San, on August 7, 2013, uh, there was an opinion editorial piece by Janet Holder, Holder sorry, the Enbridge Executive Vice President of Western Access, who is responsible for the overall leadership of the Northern Gateway, Gateway Pipelines Project. And in that, uh, she says the following, I can assure British Columbians that we are working as hard as we can day in and day out to live up to the very high standards that's being set. On the Northern Gateway website, which I've shown here, it says the following, skills are not inevitable and Northern Gateway has placed a high priority on both the assessments of risks and the measures required to mitigate those risks, as well as the response capabilities and the equipment and logistics support a rapid response would require. In the submission to the British Columbia, uh, 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 from the province of British Columbia to the Joint Review Panel, uh, on May the 31st, uh, 2013, British Columbians' interests were represented in a, what I would argue is an absolutely exceptional way. This uh, submission was thorough, it was careful, it was thoughtful, it was rigorous, and it was comprehensive. And it, it was very clear that the province uh, did an outstanding job representing the introduction uh, the interests of British Columbians. I'd like to give you a few highlights. Highlight number one. Trust me is not good enough in this case. This is in direct response to the previous state, well, to, to statements that, is, that uh, there was an expectation that will, would be a rapid and effective uh, marine response. In short, in, we have some other uh, statements here. In short, what Dilbet, which is diluted bitumen, will do when it enters water remains unclear. Northern Gateway recognizes this lack of clarity itself. As was previously stated by one of its witnesses, it's extremely difficult to predict the behavior of this product. What, appear, what does appear to be common ground is that Dilbit will sink if it becomes heavier than water, and so forth. <clears throat> the province of, uh, submits that requiring or the gateway to show that it will, in fact, have the ability to respond effectively is particularly important because there will be no subsequent public process in which that ability can be probed and tested. This is critical, absolutely critical. After the final submission and prior to the hearing of uh, the final decision of the Joint Review Panel, there is no ability for public input to determine whether or not any response has been made to the submissions that were put to the, to the Joint Review Panel. Paragraph 114, there's a serious reason to question Northern Gateway's ability to respond effectively to a spill. Paragraph 119, a num another critical piece that I'll come to with evidence in a second. A number of experts representing Environment Canada and the Department of Fisheries and Oceans have a plan uh, uh, provided opinion that the effects of an oil spill into the marine environment can persist for decades. And, and, and paragraph 127, uh, in this, it alludes to the fact that there are regions that it will be impossible or severely constrained to actually respond to any spill. Paragraph 133, the province submits that Northern Gateway has shown that it will be a, uh, able to establish a spill response regime capable, has not shown whether it can do, uh, establish a, a spill response capable of responding effectively to spills. 
and paragraph 139, with the limited explanation in the absence of supporting facts, um, it goes on to say there's simply no way in which the joint review panel could rely on the conclusions. The factual basis for these figures is entirely absent from the uh, uh, quantitative review assessment in paragraph 141, and so forth. There are many, many, many examples of a very thorough, thorough careful, line-by-line -line analysis of the submission by Northern Gateway to the Joint Review Panel. The province has essentially already outlined a no. But now let's look what's happening at, across Canada. On April the 15th of this year, a, 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 a newsletter was released by the Canadian Committee on Oceanic Research, which was somewhat surprising to me because it buried within that was a statement that said a major initiative in planning is the complementary measures project for the area surrounding Kitimat, British Columbia to support planned oil tanker traffic. I was concerned about that, so in question period I asked the following to the minister, who buried within the statement and said the following, is the government aware of this complementary measures project? And would the project meet the second of the government's five conditions for the approval of the Northern Gateway Pipeline? The response uh, was simply that the, 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 the minister seemed not aware of the, the report I mentioned and the complementary measures project in general. I followed up uh, with, a, with a question that they asked, how can the government say it has control over whether or not pipeline projects go forward if the federal government is approving funding for major initiatives without consulting the British Columbia government? And at this time, the, the minister again said that she could not respond to the specific funding, and, but she could say the following, that we have experienced very good cooperation from the feds uh, through not only Environment Canada, but NRCAN and Transport Canada with respect to their participation on our working group. It's quite different from what we're going to talk today, from the working group that is in the process of developing recommendations around our world leading skill preparedness and response. So in here for fake behavior models, this is what it says. This initiative will help to improve our understanding of non-conventional oil and model its behavior Predicting the trajectory of spilled oil products is crucial for response planning and assessing environmental impacts. Behavior models, and this is critical, this is the federal government's Department of Fishery and Ocean Scientists' own submission to the Treasury Board. Behavior models specific to Dilbit spills do not exist, and existing commercial models for conventional oil do not allow parameter-specific modifications. A response to an oil spill event can be seriously hampered, etc. There is no available oil spill model for Dilbert uh, leak in the world. The federal government's own scientists announced this. It is simply not possible at this stage for there to be an effective response to a spill because the tools do not exist. So the federal government has decided to move forward and develop those tools now. Let's look at the complementary measures project. This is an Excel spreadsheet that I have of the budget um, entitled there, Northern Gateway Project, May 2012. These are the numbers, that are, they're blurred out. This is a line-by-line -line funding under a variety of categories of the Northern Gateway Project Complementary Measures Project. These are federal taxpayers' dollars being used to do research in support of tanker traffic and oil spill research in the Kinemac area. How do I know it's in that area? Let's look at some um, slides from a presentation of the Department of Fishery and Oceans. The one, one key thing is the scope of the questions being addressed at the meeting, which shipping routes will have the most traffic shown there, and this is the scope as defined by the regions of the DFO uh, submission. And we can hit the next one. The scope is shown here. Let's just hit a few, few Douglas Channel area, potential shipping routes, um, Queen Charlotte Sound, keep going, areas of interest, the general area of interest. So what we have here, and this PowerPoint presentation will be made in full color on the website very shortly. What we have here, of course, is the, uh, the region of this complementary measure project specifically designed for oil and tanker traffic off the Kitimat coast. Environment Canada participating in this also has uh, some summary documents here uh, that show that new models for atmospheric ocean interactions, the overall behavior, et cetera, et cetera. So now they're talking about complementary measure submission under a phase of the world-class TV submission is to be able to provide improved quality surface winds along the complex waterways of interest from Kitimat to Hecate Strait and support work towards the provision of water currents. These improved parameters are then used as key inputs in the execution of spill modeling tools for oil spill assessment purposes. Of course, those tools don't exist yet and must be developed. Next slide, please. When we go here further, we find a statement that says, support to industry in the provision of surface monitoring data 
along the critical walkways, waterways of interest of this program with an MSC technician on questions related to standards and on installation funds. This is another example of federal money being used to essentially subsidize industry and industry's inability to actually provide effective response to marine building oil spills because the tools don't exist. <coughs> Here we have Environment Canada stepping in. In CBC News on August 7, 2013, Prime Minister Harper defended the independence of, of, of a pipeline approval process with a number of statements here. Decisions on these kinds of projects are made through an independent evaluation conducted by scientists into the economic costs and risks that are associated with the project. And that's how we conduct our business. The only way that governments can handle controversial projects of this manner is to ensure that things are evaluated on an independent basis, scientifically and not simply on political criteria. The government does not pick and choose particular projects. The projects have to be evaluated on their own merits. My question here is really. So my specific call today is to the province of British Columbia to reinforce the note that they provided to the joint review panel through their submission earlier this year, rather than continue down this pathway to know through the federal government investing millions and millions and millions of Canadian taxpayer dollars undertaking the research that the corporations themselves should be undertaking as part of their submission through the joint review process.